Welcome to part two of the two-part series entitled The Great Satin Gunga Ningbo, Vegetarian, Venerated Master of the Sajia School. The Great Satin Gunga Ningbo was a venerated Tibetan spiritual master known as the Great Sajaba. He was the founder of the Sajia Order and first of the five Sajia Patriarchs. He was also the third Sajia Chunzin, or throne holder, of the Sajia Monastery and was honored as an emanation of the Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva. He brought on an incredible luminous era to Tibet with his holy presence on earth. And today, we continue to trace his footsteps, beginning with some of Master Satin's teachers. The distinguished translator Mal Lozawa, who taught Satin Gunga Ningbo many Mahagala practices, also gave him some spiritually powerful gifts. Notable was a black flag, a holy object of Mahagala, a steel vajra with nine prongs, and the Mahagala mask called the Seba Nobo Porshe, or the Dharma Protector. The Mahagala mask has the power to communicate with humans and fly and is the most special of the four converging streams of Mahagala teachings into the Sajia tradition. This mask is an heirloom of the Kun lineage. Another prominent teacher was Lama Hyundun Chuba, who spent eight years orally transmitting the Holy Lam Day, or the path with the result, teachings to him. Satin Gunga Ningbo studied attentively. Once the verbal teachings were completed, the teacher gave an explicit instruction that Saint Satin could not utter a word of the teachings to anyone nor write down a single word. These promises had to be kept for 18 years. Only then could he become the true owner of the teachings and have the choice to write and or teach them to others. Among the loving gifts that Lama Hyundun Chubar gave to Satin Gunga Ningbo was a prophecy. The teacher foretold five things. First, if the graduating disciple focused on his own practice, he would reach the great Mahamudra, a very high spiritual level, in this lifetime. Second, if he focused on teaching the Dharma to others, countless beings would benefit. Third, he would have three disciples able to reach great Mahamudra without leaving their physical bodies. Fourth, seven of his disciples would reach the stage of patience. And fifth, about eighty would attain high realization. For the next eighteen years, Satin Gunga Ningbo kept his promise and continued to meditate intensively. During that time, Lama Hyundun Chubaj continued to give him additional teachings and transmissions. When Master Satin was in his forties, during a retreat, he received a vision and Varupa directly transmitted the Lam Day to him. Mahasiddha Varupa is the Lord of Yuga and respected as the source of the Lam Day system in Sajja. It is said that one special morning, after intense meditation, the great Mahasiddha Varupa appeared to him in full lotus posture and with the turning of the wheel of Dharma Mudra, surrounded by four other superior saintly beings, including Mahasiddha Krishnapa, Benjda Kayadara, Mahasiddha Kokalipa, and Mahasiddha Vanapa. This led to a memorable Samadhi experience in which Master Satin jotted down his respects for Varupa. This writing continues to be recited by Sajja practitioners to this day. There were a number of times when the great Varupa transmitted teachings and blessings to Master Satin spiritually. I am convinced that the paradigm shift will come when the Danes are informed of what industrial agriculture really means. When they realize that we cannot achieve our climate goals or restore the natural ecosystem if we do not drastically reduce our intake of animal products. Liesel Watt Olson, Vegan
Dedicated viewers, let's take a few moments to contemplate on the divine within. We'll be right back here on Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to the great Satin Gunga Ningbo, vegetarian, venerated master of the Sajia school, part two of two. Around the same period, Lama Sontyep Samba Asan, a Lama from Khan, sought the teachings of the Lam Day from Satin Gunga Ningbo, taking this as an auspicious sign that it was the right time. He assented to teaching Lama Asan. Satin Gunga Ningbo also began to write down the Lam Day Dun Duma, or condensation of the Lam Day teaching. Satin Gunga Ningbo's many disciples also wanted to learn the Lam Day, and so he granted them their wish. The teachings were done specifically for each disciple, with around 11 commentaries, including Nyagma, or explication of the treatise for Nyag, written for Geshik Nyag. Of Master Satin's prominent students, some attained the highest cities or perfections in Satana. Satana, in very simplistic terms, is a spiritual level where one is detached from worldly things. For example, at least three of Master Satin's followers were Sitras, meaning their bodies disappear upon death as they are souls in their purest form. Seven attained the very high spiritual level of forbearance. Eight acquired high realizations, and so forth. His top eleven disciples continued his oral Lam Day teachings, writing commentaries on his writings, or went on to become outstanding spiritual teachers. From the age of 20 to 67, the venerated Satin Gunga Ningbo was the head of the Satya order, he brought the Lam Day and Mahagala together into the Satya order. He also taught his two sons, Sunam Tsemo and Zetun Draba Dalsen, the teachings of the Lam Day, and they became the second and third founders of the Satya order, respectively. They were also considered to be the emanations of Manjushri and founding Satya patriarchs. Master Satin had the power to be in multiple places at one time. His disciples recollected one occasion where he was teaching Dharma, doing rituals, and receiving lessons himself simultaneously in separate locations and in front of different groups of audiences. Master Satin also possessed clairvoyance. Out of jealousy, it was said that two dark magicians sent Kamba Dorjial to obstruct and take the life of Satin Gunga Ningbo. On the surface, Kampa appeared to be a faithful disciple. Master Satin knew of the plot all along, but was waiting for the right opportunity to pacify the danger in a peaceful way. One day, while Master Satin cared for his two children, Kampa watched, thinking that Master Satin was just an ordinary man. He couldn't see how and why Satin Gunga Ningbo could be such a highly accomplished guru. At that exact moment, his master called him over to ask if he was having any wrongful thoughts. Kamba became extremely nervous as his master explained that disrespecting and holding negative thoughts towards the holy guru in Vajrayana were very sinful. Master Satin then stretched his legs and a very surreal Vajrayana mandala manifested on each foot. In deep remorse and sincerity, Kamba confessed and promised to devote himself to Master Satin. Kamba then went back to the two individuals who sent him, damaged their magical instruments to undermine their activities, and drove away their disciples. Satin Gunga Ningbo also asked Dharma protectors to send manifestations of Yak, Black Bird, and Black Dog people to subdue the two magicians. When Kamba returned and followed the great Satin's teachings, he later attained Buddhahood. During the latter part of Master Satin's life, due to a poisoning incident in Guangtong, he went into a coma and experienced memory loss when he eventually woke up. 
Another version of the account says the memory loss was due to a relapse of an illness. He sought teachers to relearn his studies and was able to get most knowledge back, except the Lam Day teachings. There were no written texts available either. While in retreat, he regained a part, and in a dream, it was Lama Hyundun Chuparj who transmitted the rest to him. Other accounts state it was Mahasiddha Varupa and Master Satin's gurus who gave him the complete Lam Day back. One way or another, he received all of his lost teachings. In 1158, Satin Gunga Ningbo passed on to higher spiritual realms. People who bid him farewell heard celestial music, smelled heavenly fragrances, and saw the sky fill with light and rainbows. Some also saw his body manifest into four distinct aspects, each departing into the corresponding realm of the Sukhavati, Potala, Odiana, and the golden-colored realm. When his holy ashes were deposited into a lake, the mandala of Chakra Samvara, a deity in Tantric Buddhism, appeared, forming the most beautiful work of art. The venerated Satin Gunga Ningbo is respected as the embodiment of the compassion and wisdom of all the Buddhas and the emanation of Lord Manjushri. Unattached to material things, he had an innate ability to see and understand the essence of Dharma teachings quickly and thoroughly. Quoting the succinct words of Rana Vajra Rinpoche, the 42nd and current Satya Chazin and Jama Lamo, all of these events were merely a display by which he, the venerated Satin Gunga Ningpo, inspired the faithful and set an example to be followed by practitioners of the future. Our gratitude and veneration to Satin Gunga Ningbo, who selflessly walked on earth to uplift and guide truth seekers on the path of enlightenment. Vegan, cause to kill and or eat an innocent being is utterly disgusting. Blessed viewers, thank you for joining us today. 